Hey everybody, welcome back to the, another episode of the Turtle and the Tiger. Today is going to be one of our first food videos. And since it's going to be the first food video, I figured I would do something more symbolic to the first meal of the day and do some cowboy coffee. So stay tuned. Okay, so you're going to find a lot of recipes on the internet about cowboy coffee. And there's a lot of different ways of making it. This is the way I make it. This is the way we like it. My wife likes it. Um, a couple of the things I'm not going to go over is like condiments and like sugar and creamer and things like that. But we use evaporated milk. Uh, it's a canned milk, so it actually stays pretty well. It's pretty shelf stable and powdered creamer. We don't use a lot of sugar, so there is sugar in the evaporated milk, not so much in the creamer. So I'm not going to go over to condiments. I'm just going to do the basics. So first off, the first basic item is your coffee pot. Now, this coffee pot I bought uh, off of eBay. Uh, it was used. I paid five bucks for it. It's enamelized. It's not a percolator. There's nothing inside of it. It's just a lid in a pot. And one of the things you get, if you buy a used pot, make sure you put some water in it. Make sure there's no pinholes. Sometimes you can have pinholes in them. So that's the first thing you're gonna need. You're gonna need coffee. Coffee, just regular ground coffee. I use Folgers, but we've used other kinds of coffee too. You're gonna need a strainer. Uh, you can get this strainer in any food store. You can buy some of the smaller, finer food uh, coffee baskets in the coffee section of your grocer. You're gonna need a measuring spoon. This happens to be two tablespoons, something to measure water, and a cup. The other thing you might gonna use is, uh, and I have one here hiding away, is a timer. Okay, so you're gonna need a timer. So let me show you how we put this all together. Okay, so today I'm gonna make. Oh no. To say, thought my pump didn't work there for a minute. Today we're gonna make five cups of coffee. When I say five cups, this isn't a measuring cup. It's about two cups in there, a cup and a half. I'm going to use this. You can't see it, but there's little graduations on here. And I've done this so many times, I know where it is. Uh, it's always neat to be do, get something dual purpose, storage, measuring device, that kind of thing. So, I'm going to water right out of the trailer. I know that if I fill it up the first time, it's going to be three cups. And then the second time, I'll be, I know exactly where to stop for the two cups. So there's the three. And then there's two more. And right about bar would do it. Okay, so there's your two. All right. Next important, we're gonna put our fire to it. Now, why am I doing this on the trailer versus a campfire? Well, currently, we're in California, and California's got a fire restriction. So no campfires here, so we're using the stove. And a lot of times, wherever we go, if it's just not convenient, this is the way we'll go anyway. So what you're gonna wanna do, is you're gonna bring this up to a boil, in the meantime, we got some other so things. So while the water is boiling, I usually use one of these containers just to have all my pre-measured coffee in it ready to go. So when I first started making this recipe, for every cup, I put one of these scoops in, a level one. Okay, so that's basically two tablespoons per measured cup of water. Okay, I stopped doing that. And I stopped doing that because it tasted pretty good, but it was pretty strong. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is, I would say start off with basically eight tablespoons for five cups of water. If you wanna start out the way I started out, which was uh, basically five of these for five cups, which is basically 10 tablespoons, you can go that route. The way we do it now is five cups of water to six tablespoons of coffee and it works out great. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna do, th there's three, and I'll give a little for the pot. And it just makes it nice, so when it comes time to put it in the pot, 
it's right there and ready to go. Okay, while we're talking, one of the things I use to stir, because you're going to need something to store, and that's one of these. You don't need this thing, but you need a spoon or something you can reach into the pot and give it a good stir. Okay, so we'll wait for our water to come to a boil. As our water is getting closer, you want to get a couple of things prepared. Get your coffee ready, something to stir it with, and your timer. And your timer is important. If you can get a timer like this, where you can do a preset amount of time in it, uh, let's see, we're going to go with two minutes. So you're all just remember two minutes and you're going to be great. So have that set up. Your coffee or strainer is ready to go. Now a lot of times you see back here in the corner, I put my cup back there as I'm heat up, heating up my water so it basically preheats my cup and it makes a big difference when it comes time to pour in your coffee, especially on a chilly morning. It doesn't get cold right away. Looks like we're getting a full boil in here and it's important to have a full boil. Open it up, turn it off, turn off your heat, yeah that's right, turn off your heat, you add your coffee. Give it a really good stir, and if you can at the same time, start your timer down. It's going to count down from two minutes. That's a good enough stir. I had a paper towel here somewhere. I'm going to wipe my tool there. All right, now you got to wait two minutes. And we'll see what happens at the end of two minutes. Okay, it's the end of two minutes. We're going to go ahead and stop, and we're going to restart it again. So we're going to stir and let it sit for a second two minute period. Okay, while it's doing that, just wanna let you know, so I've got my coffee cup here, my wife's, and then this is gonna be used for extra. So at the end of two minutes, we're gonna, you're gonna be prepared to pour it off and strain also, it. Also, at this point in time, I'm usually having, I have my creamer in here. We don't, we're not gonna do that today. I'm actually going to take all this coffee and put it in the refrigerator for iced coffee later. Uh, but normally, the creamers would go in here. All right, so there's our time. I'm going to turn off my timer and pour off the coffee. Now, the way I do this is, it's going to be a little weird here with the cameras and everything. Basically, go through the first strainer, or the, on the first cup, you're going to put your strainer. And what I normally do, there's all the grounds that it caught. Go to the second one. I dump out the grounds in between, pour the second cup. Not so much in that one. Off there, and then all the extra goes in here. Now, why, why pour it all off now? Well, the longer it sits in the coffee grounds, the stronger it's going to get. So you can kind of judge what it's like. Some people drink this stuff like it's mud. I kind of like it to be consistent. I like it a certain way, and this is the way it, and it turns out pretty good this way. All right, so there you have it. That's all the coffee. Oh, it smells awesome. Okay, so one of the things you're going to see in a lot of the, a lot of uh, Google searches is that there is a process whereby you do this coffee under heat. In other words, you add the grounds and you boil the water with the grounds and then you pull it off the heat and add a little cold water and that makes the ground settle. It seems like a lot of times I've had, I've had luck both ways with that. That's why I ended up with this process. Because when I use this, I know all the grounds are out and if I time it off, off the heat, uh, it, the, the flavor is the same exact every time and there's no, no chance I'm gonna burn it. Why not use a percolator? Well, a percolator, same thing. It's got a couple moving parts and it's more to clean. And the other thing is like you do run the risk of overflowing it, boiling it, burning it. You can't burn coffee this way, there's no way. You can burn water, but you can't burn coffee. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you got any suggestions for what you'd like for me to cook in the future, go ahead and put the comments down below. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that little notification bell as well. So until next time, take care. Bon appétit.